Section 3. This is the test. The saddest aspect of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom. Isaac Asimov. We now have some idea of how an RBE would function, and we've gone through some objections and queries in order to show the logical strength that underlies this idea. But how do we ensure that this system would actually work? No matter how great we think the RBE idea is, and no matter how much support the idea receives from the people, it is of little consequence until we actually have some idea of whether or not this system would function. The only way to determine this is by putting the RBE concept to the test. In fact, the entire book up until this point can be thought of as rationale for what I will propose in this section, a concrete plan that would allow us to test this system and make necessary corrections until we produce a system that functions as well as physically possible. Here, I will outline a general plan consisting of six major steps that might give us the key to changing the face of our entire global society. Once again, I will stress that this plan is not meant to be a completely comprehensive instruction guide. Instead, what I have done is create a kind of skeleton that could be used to form the general structure of a testing protocol. As with my actual description of an RBE, this outline is not set in stone, I fully expect that it will be replaced in part or entirely by better ideas and superior plans that I was not able to think of. My purpose is simply to show how the testing of an RBE would ideally occur, by presenting an example of the testing procedure. The basic premise is to engage in a series of experiments that would allow us to test the RBE concept, while simultaneously paving the way for its implementation. It goes something like this, gather the knowledge, test the technology, test the basic concept on a small scale with very few variables, slowly increase the scale while adding variables and complexity, test the concept on a larger scale, and use this as a platform for further expansion and implementation. The ultimate goal of this plan is to create at least one fully functioning, self-sufficient, automated city or colony, which would serve as an example of this new system. From this, we would have a much stronger platform for getting the RBE idea recognized and implemented on larger and larger scales, thus giving us a solid foundation from which to push for global implementation. However, it would be wise for us to avoid making the same mistake of times past, and thinking that our theoretical system will function perfectly well when implemented we will instead proceed with extreme caution. The true strength of this plan lies in its flexibility, we need to be able to give ourselves enough leeway to adjust parameters and experimental procedures as needed. Rather than planning each phase in isolation, every step takes future steps into account, and is dependent upon previous steps for guidance, thus allowing us to take advantage of successes and adjust for shortcomings. This process of careful experimentation has given us all of the scientific wonders of the modern world, from sandals to satellites. Now, let's see what it can do for society. Step 1, Assemble. We begin by holding some kind of conference or other large meeting, in order to bring together technical experts, along with other scientific and artistic minds, who are interested in pursuing the RBE system. The purpose of this meeting would be to allow for direct communication between the groups who will ultimately be responsible for designing the experiments and building the technology that will make an RBE happen. In other words, we need to start doing some serious planning. By holding an annual conference or meeting, we would ensure that there would be a forum for all interested parties to present their ideas to each other, and facilitate inter-group learning. This would also be a good opportunity for the minds behind various technologies to begin integrating their ideas together. For example, the vertical farm people could talk to the evacuated tube transport people, to discuss how the farms and tube technology could be combined to allow for efficient shipping of food. The folks behind the bit car may want to have a word or two with groups working on autonomous automobiles. Basically everyone will want to learn more about additive manufacturing, since they'll need to know if and how their specific technologies can be built using this fabrication technique. The list of possible technological collaborations is a very long one. 
It would also be advisable for this conference to be open to the public as well, so that it could become a platform for those involved to directly engage and educate the public about their ideas, and the progress being made towards having a concrete plan for the RBE experiment. Transparency to the public is extremely important, since we're ultimately trying to get the public to support this idea. After a few meetings, perhaps even the first one, we would be at a point where we could begin organizing task groups to plan out specific aspects of the test community. For example, one group might focus on energy generation, while another focuses on infrastructure for water and waste, and a third group might get to work on the experimental design itself. There are two major goals that need to be accomplished here before we can proceed to the next step. One. We must have comprehensive computer models, and at least small-scale physical models, for every piece of technology, and every aspect of the test communities. This is critical, because additive manufacturing requires computer models to build from. By having these models created at this point, the actual experimental process will be much smoother and more efficient. 2. We need to begin planning the actual experiments including the creation of the first wave of surveys that will be used to run the test societies. At this stage, it would be too early to have a concrete plan laid out for the entire process, we must ensure that we remain flexible in the event that necessary changes must be made, but the first stage at least should be well defined, and a general idea of how to proceed following this stage should exist. We should also have a good idea of how we will recruit subjects and what the inclusion and exclusion criteria for selecting subjects will be. By ensuring that we meet these two major criteria, we could smoothly move into the testing phase when we are ready. This would also be the time to take care of the mountain of bureaucracy and paperwork that will need to be overcome before this kind of large-scale experiment can begin. This is going to take a lot of time and energy much of which will detract directly from time and energy spent working on the actual project, as anyone with experience in research will be painfully familiar with. Unfortunately, this is an unavoidable reality of scientific experimentation in our current system, and it will have to be dealt with. I cannot even begin to fathom how large this mountain will be, or what endless forms and files it will consist of all, but we have no choice other than to climb it. An optional addition to this step would be to form task groups who are specifically pushing for the implementation of systems other than an RBE. In fact, the meetings themselves could be oriented towards exploring a variety of alternative socio-economic systems, with an RBE simply being one of them. This is not to encourage competition between the systems, but cooperation and mutual learning. By having a number of systems being tested simultaneously, it would be possible for each system to learn from the triumphs and shortcomings of the other test systems, thus increasing the chances of creating at least one highly functional and stable socio-economic system. Testing multiple systems is not 100% necessary for this testing plan, but there are certainly advantages in proceeding that way. This plan is written out assuming that we only test the RBE concept, but the logic used here could apply to the testing of many experimental social system, particularly, any relying heavily on technology. The purpose of step 1 is to allow the subsequent steps to proceed with the least amount of time and energy wasted. Extra effort would still need to be expended for making necessary tweaks to the experimental design as we go, as well as measuring and interpreting the data and keeping the public informed as to the overall progress. However, this planning step should allow us to be well prepared for a future step, so that we can proceed from one step to the next with relatively little delay. Once we have models for all of the test communities and a well-defined experimental methodology, we can proceed to step 2. I predict that this planning step will take about five years to progress to a point at which we are justified in proceeding. Step 2. Establish a fully automated extraction slash production facility. This step is all about establishing a facility that is able to extract raw materials, refine them, and craft them into usable products, all in one place, and without any human labor. This facility should include, at a minimum, 
a permanent and reliable source of power. Depending on location and environment, any of geothermal, solar, wind, tidal slash wave, or a combination thereof should be suitable. A resource extraction slash mining system to allow the facility to obtain as many of the aggregates as possible for making concrete, which will likely be the primary construction material. Other materials might need to be shipped in, but imported materials should be kept to a minimum. A refining sector to convert the mine draw materials into a usable form. A vertical farm, capable of producing both food, and plant material for the creation of thermoplastics a manufacturing center that is, at a minimum, capable of creating machines of varying size for additive manufacturing, and a variety of thermoplastic goods. A system for transporting goods to the nearby cities. This will likely take the form of a vac train system. The purpose of this step is twofold, to test the basic technologies on which an RBE is reliant, and to create the technical foundation for the construction of the first test community. Ideally, the entire facility will be built automatically through additive manufacturing and other advanced fabrication techniques, the initial contributions of a temporary power source, a few contour crafting robots, the raw materials, and perhaps a small amount of human labor should be the only external input required in order to construct this facility. The specific ends this facility is used for will ultimately be up to whoever footed the bill for its construction and the rights to build on the land, we won't have this cap capitalism yet. Depending on the mindset of the person or group who provided the capital, they might choose this facility to cheaply produce goods and sell them in the market in order to cover their investment costs, and perhaps make a profit. A more altruistic philanthropist might instead 